So what what's what brought about the need for one? What is 104? And and what kind of brought about the need for 104 after 35 existed? So the, the uh, you know as the the Scotty 35 standard was evolving, they were coming up with more and more complex uh, messaging that uh, you couldn't sort of signal efficiently by a contact closure anymore. Because, you know, in the, in the old days, if you only had local starts, local end, you have two GPIO points on your encoder, you trigger one, it inserts one message, you trigger another one, it inserts another, right? Now, when you have a more complex uh, set of uh, things that you want to express in the compressed domain, um, you need a more compress. You need a more complex way to I express what do you want the encoder to do. And uh, SCADI 104 is really a, a language that you use to tell the encoder what do you want your SCADI 35 messages to look like. It's it's a it's a way to control encoder and potentially other systems downstream because uh, you can also communicate things like EPG and uh, a bunch of other uh, a bunch of other things uh, through it. Um, it's very extensible as well, so people do it. People use it for more than just uh, SCADI 35 creation. But the the essential purpose of that is to tell the encoder uh, where do you need a SCADI 35 message. And um, technically, it's a uh, message that's embedded in a vertical um, ancillary data or vertical blanking space, as it used to call used to be called in the old analog days. And I mean, you can if you look at the full frame of video of an SDI frame that shows you the first, uh, you know, the first invisible lines in the invisible area, you can actually see it because it's in the it's in the Luma channel. So they'll they'll show up as you know these gray dots above uh, above the actual picture. If you if you can stop that frame that where the message is present, you can actually see it. Um, so uh, what happens then in the decoder is the decoder actually processes these invisible parts of a frame because uh, you've got your audio in the horizontal ancillary space, you've got your, uh, you know, a bunch of other stuff in the, in the bank, in the vertical ancillary space, you know, your time codes, uh, uh, time codes there, AFD is close, close captioning, your AFD is there, and, and SCADI, 30, SCADI 104 is there as well. Yeah. So a, an encoder would take that message, interpret it, and produce a SCADI 35 based on that. Okay. Encoder should take that message and produce a 35. That's a very important <laughs> you got experience. Where, where it doesn't always happen that way. It doesn't always happen. <laughs> uh, you know, in some cases there, there's there's problems, and as Alan said, because a lot of it is because of legacy encoders out there. Or, they? or sometimes the standard changes so quickly. Yeah, the exactly. manufacturers exactly. yeah, can't it's, possibly. It, you you end up in a situation where um, it, it's based on need. Right. So if, 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 if all you're using SCUDDY 35 for is local commercial insertion, the you know, encoder manufacturers are, are going are to build to that. Right? Right. So they're going to basically, they're going to be looking for 104 messages that signaling you know, local ad breaks. Um, and of course, as, as things move forward and people want to use SCUDDY 35 for more advanced um, signaling, um, maybe it takes a little bit of time for the encoder manufacturer to catch up. And they don't all implement it in the same way. And so you have an inconsistent mapping from 104 to 35. Uh, brings up a great, couple of great questions. One, if I'm gonna go shop for encoders today, what do I need to put in my list of requirements so that encoder manufacturers know that I want 104 to 35 translation? And second question, what tools are available to make sure that that translation occurs properly? Okay, well, um, in, in the specification, you, you're going to need to reference not just the standard, but the, the latest version of the standard. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the case of SCOTI 35, there have been multiple versions. I know um, the group meets regularly, and, and it seems like every year. <laughs> and so, so that's the first thing. Um, yeah. In terms of tools, well, you know, the Crystal's VMA um, is a perfect example. Um, in that you have the ability to completely deconstruct the, the message. You can, you can see, was this SCSI 35 message inserted in exactly the right time? Mm -hmm. the, you know, the right frame, is it referencing the right frame of video? And has it got the right data inside it? Is it structured properly? Is it, you know, are all the right descriptors in place? Is it, is it signaling what it should signal? And, and that's critically important, um, particularly if you've got ad revenue on, on, based on it.